to another edition of Ed's Attention to Detail. Today, I'm going to show you how to do an oil change. And this is really simple, to be quite honest. This is going to be on my 2007 Chevrolet Silverado. It's a 4.8 liter V8. Pretty straightforward. Uh, not a whole lot involved in it. But if you haven't ever done it before, maybe you'll learn something. If you have done it before and I'm doing something that you might think is wrong, leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Um, tell me the way you do it, how you would do it different, something like that. Just be respectful, be courteous is all I ask. Um, but yeah, I've been doing oil changes on my vehicles off and on for years. So uh, like I said, it is pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna get the oil warmed up. So you know how molasses and syrup is. If you take it and you put it in a refrigerator or something, then you try to pour it, it's real slow, it's real thick. But if you heat it up, it's a lot smoother. It runs a lot easier. Same thing with oil. The viscosity of oil, the hotter it is, the easier it flows. So you wanna make sure that your engine is warmed up. They recommend 20 minutes, um, just operating temperature as far as I'm concerned, but it helps the oil actually drain out of the engine when you do drain the oil. That's the reason why you want to uh, get your engine up to an operating temperature before you start this. Now, one of the drawbacks to that is your engine is up to operating temperature. So there's going to be some things that are hot in there. The exhaust manifold, the engine block, stuff like that. It's going to be warm. Um, just be careful that you don't uh, touch any of the exhaust or anything like that um, because you can get burned. So just a word of caution. Uh, keep that in mind when you're down underneath the, the vehicle. A lot of the newer vehicles, cars, especially uh, front wheel drive, the engine sits crossways and it's hard to get to the oil filter sometimes without uh, coming in contact with the exhaust manifold. So definitely, definitely want to use caution whenever you're doing that. But let's go ahead and get to this one and uh, I'll show you the steps that we're doing. Okay, so the first step is you want to start the vehicle up and go ahead and get it warmed up. So. There you go. Starts up. And you'll notice that I have the driver information center down here. And it says, it's kind of dirty. This is a work truck. Change in jewel. Uh, yeah, also 133,000 miles. Now, the mileage is going to be important for one reason and that is you might want to consider using a high mileage oil. If you have over 70 to 80,000 miles on your vehicle, high mileage oils are designed for engines that have a little bit of wear. Uh, they have some additives that have been put into the oil and it helps keep the oil seals pliable. That way you don't end up with oil leaks. So just a, uh, a thought, um, if you do have a higher mileage car, vehicle, whatever, you might want to consider a high mileage oil to put in it. So, all right, so while the engine's running, I'm gonna go ahead, get the hood open, get the oil out, and I'm gonna show you what I use. All right, real quick, the things that you're gonna need to know is where you're going to put the oil when you do put the new oil in and you're going to need to know where your dipstick is so that you can check your engine oil level now that's about all you really need to know under the hood for an oil change now one of the things that i do is i'll usually i'll top off my washer fluid i'll check and make sure that my brake fluid is topped off my coolant now I'm not going to open this because the engine's running, but I check my coolant level and make sure that it's at a good level and it looks like it is. Now, a little bit dirty under here, but you know what, like I said before, this is a work truck, it's not a showpiece. So now something that somebody did, this, this is before I got the vehicle, but they wrote six quarts. 
So yeah, a lot of the cars nowadays take six quarts and more. So you might want to check your owner's manual and see how many quarts you're going to need in your vehicle when you do this. What I use is a full synthetic and if you read the label, you'll uh, this is an advanced synthetic motor oil. I use a 5W30 which is recommended by the vehicle manufacturer, but also I use a high mileage oil like I talked about before. This has additives in it that will help a high mileage engine, help prevent oil leaks, uh, just uh, kind of help it all the way around. So, five quarts and an extra makes six. So I have my six quarts. You want to use a good quality oil filter. Now, there's a lot of debate out there about what oil filters are, are better than others and I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I've gone with the AC Delco filter. Now the one thing you want to look at on this is you want to make sure that this rubber seal right here get close so you can see that make sure that this rubber seal is in good condition look at the threads inside there make sure that they look like they're clean and not marred up and before I put this on the uh, on the truck I'm actually gonna take some new oil and I'm gonna rub a little bit around this oil filter rim around the seal so that when I screw it on the seal will actually twist and, and uh, create a seal instead of possibly ripping and I'm also going to fill this oil filter up with oil before I put it on there too because that will prevent you from starting your engine and having a dry oil pump for, for a couple of seconds. So Now another thing you're going to want to have, a set of gloves to help keep you clean. Definitely going to need a rag. I've got my oil pan drain or my drain pan. So I'm going to have that underneath there. And you'll also notice that I have ramps. Now, this truck is actually tall enough that I could get underneath it and do this without having to put it up on the ramps. But I wanted to put it on the ramps to show you guys how to do this. Now, when you do put a vehicle up on the ramps, you want to have somebody help you do this. Now, I've done it a bunch of times, and this probably isn't the right way to do it. Because I've done it a bunch of times, I'm pretty confident I could do it by myself. You can drive over the ramps and fall off the other side. So you got to be careful. Um, usually that second person will help you guide the vehicle up onto the ramps and tell you when to stop. So I'm going to do it without the second person. I know I shouldn't. I know I'm preaching to you, telling you you need the second person. Then I'm going to turn around and do just the opposite. But anyway, if I do drive over the ramps, you guys get to see something funny. Okay, so there we go. It's up on the ramps and looks like that ramp moved just a little bit while this one kind of stayed in place. But we're close enough. Uh, I took my foot off the brake and uh, it's not rolling. I did set the emergency brake and I'm going to get a set of chocks and put under the rear wheels also because the last thing you want is for this thing to try to take off and start rolling while you're underneath it. Have my chocks installed. I have my wrenches. Now, one thing, and I already know this, but these are metric oil plugs that are on these, these GM trucks. And if memory serves me correct, they're either 15 or 16, excuse me, 14 or 15 millimeter. So that's what I'm going to take with me uh, when I crawl underneath the truck, those two wrenches. And I'm going to go down there. I'm going to show you where the oil plug is. I'm going to show you where the oil filter is. And then I'm going to set the camera up out here while I crawl back under there and actually do the oil change. So, okay, so here we are underneath the front end of the truck. So find your engine. If you can't find the engine, then you probably shouldn't be doing this to begin with. But uh, anyway, so here's the oil filter. And you notice that on this truck, it's pretty wide open. Not a whole lot around it. Uh, really easy to get to, which is a nice thing. And the oil pan right here, this is the drain plug. So it's right at the back. And that's also useful when you have the, the truck up on the ramps. 
so that it has a little bit of a downward slope so the oil is going to run to the back of the uh, oil pan and uh, that's where we're going to drain it from so let's go ahead and get started with that now actually what i'm going to do first before i crawl underneath there is i'm going to go ahead and put some oil inside the oil filter like i said the reason for doing that is when you do your first startup after the oil change, that just ensures that you're pulling oil straight through the oil pump and, and you're not running anything dry. So you just pour it right down the middle, the, the big opening in the middle where the threads are. Just pour the oil in there and you try not to overfill the filter. Now, on this particular vehicle, it's really simple because oil filter's straight up. Some of them, you actually gotta put them on from the side. Some of them, you put them on upside down. Now, if that's the case, then you might wanna not do this step because you're, ended, you're gonna end up making a mess trying to get the filter on if you got it full of oil. So, but like I said, mine is straight up, so gravity's gonna keep the oil inside the oil filter. And it's just going to work for me a little bit. Now, like I said, take a little bit of the new oil and I want to spread it around on that, uh, that gasket that's on the top of the oil filter. Get it nice and lubricated. All right, looks like the oil filter is pretty much to a point to where it's not going to hold much more oil so it's time to get underneath there and drain the old oil out I'm gonna leave this where I can reach it so like I said if my memory serves me correct it's either 14 or 15 millimeter for the drain plug so that's the next thing that, that you want to do is pull the drain plug out and you want to make sure that you position your oil pan so that it will catch the oil that's coming out. All right, well, so 14 millimeter isn't working, and this is the first oil change I've done since I bought the truck, so I don't know. It might have a different, uh, different plug installed in it. 13 millimeter seems to, seems to fit, though. Let's see how much way. So, righty-tighty lefty loosey so I'm gonna end up pushing the wrench that way to get it off and it's on here pretty tight but there we go okay now it's broke loose it's turning so 13 millimeter now you need to be careful when you pull the plug out because the oil is warm so try and grab a hold of it in a way to where you don't burn yourself on an exhaust manifold or anything but you have your hand out of the way when the oil starts to flow. And you want to make sure that you have your oil pan positioned correctly so that it'll catch the oil that's draining out also. Oh, I might have got a little bit of splatter on me. So maybe a set of uh, safety glasses would be good. Now, you want to check your oil plug. They usually have a magnet on the end of them, like this one. And just look and see if it has any debris stuck to it, which this one looks pretty good. It's in good shape. You want to check it's got a gasket on it. Look at that gasket and make sure that it looks like it's in good shape too. Now some people will tell me that you need to replace this gasket every time that you change your oil. I don't, 
as long as that gasket looks like it's in good shape, I will reuse it. And I'll look under here in a day or two and make sure that there are no leaks. If I see a leak, then that tells me, yeah, I need to replace the gasket on it. Drawback to that is, by that time, you already got six quarts of brand new oil in your engine. So, you might run through an extra six quarts of oil by doing that. So, I understand why people tell me to do it. Um, however, like I said, I'm not going to replace the gasket. I'm pretty confident that it's in good shape. It looks like it's in good shape. There were no leaks under here to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it. So while we're waiting on the oil to drain out the rest of the way, I'm gonna see if I can get this oil filter to break loose. It's on there pretty snug and that's good. You don't want it on there real loose. Now the big problem right now is all the dirt that's underneath this engine is trying to fall down on me. And like I said, I might have put on some safety glasses or something but now the oil filter is moving very slowly but it's moving so I want to make sure that I put my drain pan underneath the oil filter because there's going to be oil come out of it too once I get it broke loose so the oil pan is broke loose I'm not sure if you could see where the oil started coming out of it, but yeah, it's uh, you, you can see that, I'm sure you can hear it. And of course, you can see it on my glove here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish taking the oil filter off. Now it's going to unscrew several turns after you get it broke free before it actually comes off there now we got it off you want to let the oil drain out of the engine I'm making a little bit of a mess here on the ground but try and keep that cleaned up now you want to try to contain the oil as best as possible because you don't want it to get into your your groundwater or anything like that uh, oil is not good for for the soil or plants or anything else um, and if it gets into the drinking water then yeah that's even worse so all right looks like the oil is more or less drained out now so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my plug now again before you do that just make sure that the threads on the plug look like they're in good shape and 13 millimeter wrench okay now that's tight so I usually go about a quarter turn or so past tight now I know that these uh, these oil plugs have a specific torque value and you can look them up if, if you're concerned about that I've never had a problem with tight plus a quarter turn and that's usually what I do with an oil filter also put it on there get it snugged up and then tighten it another quarter turn okay now remember the gasket that's on the new oil filter you want to make sure that the gasket on the old oil filter stayed on the old oil filter you want to look and make sure that it's not on the on the vehicle and I can see the the metal flange that's what I just cleaned off I can see the metal flange uh, the old filter gasket is not there so let me get my new filter over here and this is real easy to install like I said it just goes straight up there and it twists on it screws on And it should screw on really easy. I mean, no effort at all, it should screw on there. Okay, now, I've got it on there, I've got it snug. So I'm gonna turn it another quarter turn. And there you go. New filter, oil plugs in. 
And I can bring everything out from underneath here. And I'm going to save this box and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got the oil drained, we want to come in here. All right, so the oil filler, just wipe it down. Get any dirt or anything off of it. Um, because you don't want to open that up and let dirt fall into the engine. But we'll go ahead and we'll take that off. Let's set it over here out of the way. Now, you'll also notice that it has a gasket on it as well. Just take a quick look at it, make sure that's in good shape. And then we're going to take the dipstick out. We're going to wipe it down. And we're going to use that and uh, gauge when we get a full uh, oil pan oil reservoir uh, when we get all the six quarts of oil in there and it should show full on the dipstick when we get done so i'm going to go ahead and so i'm going to get the oil in the engine and hopefully you guys can see what's going on there with that so like i said i'll wipe the old oil off the dipstick just lay it up here out of the way and i'm going to get my oil and pour it in now it does help to have a funnel when you're doing this especially when uh, like that five quart uh, jug that I've got that's gonna be quite the challenge to get this oil spell but I don't have a uh, I don't have a funnel right now with me, so I probably need to look around and see if I can find one so that I don't end up pouring oil all over everything. Okay, so I went and I got a funnel, and that'll make this a little bit easier. Now. These uh, five quart containers of oil, they're nice because you're not grabbing a whole bunch of smaller bottles. Uh, but they, they, they do get to be a little bit cumbersome when you're trying to pour them into, into your engine. So that is probably the one drawback to them. But not sure if you can see that or not, but you can tell quite the difference in the old oil, which was pretty black, and this is a nice amber color. Yeah, having this funnel definitely made the world a difference in, in getting this, this oil poured in there. Now, don't just throw these away because you pour your old oil back in them and then you take them down to an oil recycling place and uh, you can dispose of your oil properly and uh, get it recycled. So these come in handy when it comes for doing that. Okay, so I got the oil filler cap cleaned up got all the dust and dirt off of it and remember I told you that 5w30 was what was recommended by the manufacturer so, put that oil cap back in screw it down until it's tight now you don't have to torque that uh, it don't have to be screwed down real tight just you know snug because the gasket's going to do all your work. The, the tightness of the plug don't really have a whole lot to do with it. And I'm going to go ahead and put the dipstick in. Dipstick is clean. And let's see, we should have a full oil pan. Make sure that you stick the disc, dipstick all the way down into the tube and pull it back out. And it's kind of hard to see because the oil is clean, 
but right now my oil level is right here where my finger is. So you want to make sure that it's up past those dots and I'm not sure if you can see the X's that are on the dipstick itself but you want to make sure that you're past the dots. Now it's going to show a little bit high in the beginning because the oil filter even though I put oil in it the oil filter is not completely full yet. So that's going to happen when we start the vehicle up, start the truck up and we let everything kind of run through, let it cycle. So, since we're talking about that, let's go ahead and start her up. All right, so you wanna listen and make sure that the engine's not making any weird noises. Which it sounds pretty smooth. And the other thing you want to do, you want to look underneath and just take a look underneath and make sure that the oil filter is not leaking, drain plug's not leaking, everything sounds good. And I think that uh, we're going to call that a successful oil change. So I'm also going to go ahead and lubricate my upper and lower ball joints while I'm down underneath the truck. I'm not going to show you that because honestly there's really not a whole lot to see on that. Uh, it's just using a grease gun and, and lubricating some grease fittings. Now it is important if your vehicle has grease fittings that most people will usually do the lubrication cycle at the same time that you change your oil. And that way your ball joints, your tie rod ends, anything that requires grease is gonna last a good long time. Okay guys, one thing that I almost forgot. You remember in the beginning where it said change engine oil on the driver information center? Well, we need to clear that message. Now, each vehicle has a different way of doing it. Um, on this truck, you turn the ignition switch on and then you hit and mash the gas pedal down to the floor three times, quick. One, two, three, and it says oil life reset. So the computer on the truck actually kind of monitors the oil life and based on your driving style, speed, uh, stuff like that, it will calculate when your next oil change is due. Now some people rely on that, I do. Um, I think it's a great feature. Some people are religious about every 3,000 miles we're gonna change our oil. That's fine if that's how you think about it. Um, the more often you change it, the better it should prolong the life of your internal engine parts. Um, but like I said, I, I just rely on the, uh, the computer on the truck to tell me when I need to do that. Now, another final thought before I leave you. A lot of people will change the air filter at this time also. So you can take a look at it and see if it needs it uh, completely up to your judgment. Now I do have a video that I put out about changing the air filter on my 2014 Chevrolet Impala. And I'll leave a link to that up here uh, so that you can go back and see that. I put a K&N air filter in the Impala. Now that is a wash reuse kind of air filter. It's not a throw away air filter. Um, bunch of them out there, uh, different, uh, different kinds. So you can do your research, figure out which one's best for you. Um, I'm definitely not gonna advocate one over the other. And uh, I'm certainly not telling you run out and buy uh, K&N or, or anybody else. So anyway, that's, that's all I got for you. I appreciate you watching. Thanks again, guys. And remember, pay attention to the details. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and hit the notification button so you know when I'm doing a new video. Like this video and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Also, feel free to share this with any of your social media sites.